you. My name is Corey Redderkop. I am the Director of Policy and Stakeholder Relations here at the Burnaby Board of Trade. We are the Chamber of Commerce for the City of Burnaby, and we represent about 1,100 uh, businesses across Burnaby and the region. Um, and this is Small Business Week, so we're thrilled to be uh, joining you today. Uh, with this session, we have a number of events and programming scheduled for this week, uh, and everything we've done over the last 111 years since we kicked off back in 1910 has been supporting our small and medium business community, so we're thrilled to always have a chance to, to highlight that during this time of, in October. Um, before we get started officially, I'd like to take a moment to recognize that where I am here in our Metro Town offices, I am on the traditional homeland of the Hankamenum and Skohomish speaking peoples, and I want to extend appreciation for the opportunity to hold uh, today's session on that territory. Um, I do I want to also thank um, a couple of special uh, organizations that help make uh, what we do possible. And those are our annual board partners. Um, you should see them on your screen there today. Um, these are the, or the, the corporate citizens who really step out step up throughout the year to help us with everything we do. You can see the platinum partners are the BCIT School of Business and Media and the Burnaby Now. Our gold partners are Fortis, Pacific Blue Cross, SFU Electronic Arts, Douglas College, and ABC Recycling. And our silver partners are Appia Development, the TD Bank Group, Alexander College, Trans Mountain, the Vancouver Fraser Port Authority, representing the Port of Vancouver, and Scotiabank. They do a ton of stuff uh, for us and with us throughout the year, so thanks to them for everything that they do. Um, uh, uh, to support our uh, organization. As I said, this session is part of uh, this week's Small Business Week programming. And uh, we're, we're really happy to be talking about uh, today uh, business exit planning. It's an important topic for any business owner. I'm happy to be joined by uh, our friend uh, uh, Joe Markovich here to speak uh, to this. Uh, so I'll be passing over to Joe in, in, a, in a quick second here. It's uh, Joe, you sound like you've got a few friends in the audience there, but if you don't know who Joe is, Joe is a senior business advisor, a BEI certified exit planner, and the co-founder of Solly's Bakery. Uh, Joe has more than 30 years of SME business experience in the Vancouver market. Uh, Joe's personal business exit ex uh, experience and the exit stories of many former SME business owners are what motivated his, his interest uh, to learn more and to get involved in guiding owners to a better way of exiting their business, which is kind of next to starting the business, probably one of the more, most important parts of that entrepreneurial journey. Uh, Joe's business owner experience, professional coaching practice, and training certification make him uniquely qualified and a valuable source and resource for information on this subject. And that's why we're thrilled, so thrilled to have Joe as part of the Board of Trade Network and, and here today. Um, I know Joe has been a, a business instructor at BCC for more than 10 years, a senior advisor at War, Wardell in, uh, International since 2016. He's a, a member of the Burnaby Board of Trade here in the last year or so, so we're thrilled to have him as part of our group. Uh, and Joe, really happy to have you here today to share some thoughts and expertise. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Joe. As I said, there's there's a chat box function. If you have any questions or comments that come up, my colleague uh, Ailet's going to be jumping on uh, after I dr drop off here to help uh, facilitate any Q&As. Uh, but Joe, again, appreciate your time. Looking forward to hearing what you've got to share with everybody and over to you. All right. Uh, thank you, Corey. And just get my screen in place um, here. Can anybody, everybody see uh, what I'm showing? Looks good on my end. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. Well, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, as Corey mentioned, my name is Joe Markovich and I thank you all for, for attending. Um, and thank you to the Burnaby Board of Trade for hosting. I hope you all find this presentation valuable. Um, my presentation is going to be in three parts. Uh, the first part I want to do is uh, I just want to share with you a little bit about what, what exit planning is all about and what does the process look like. Uh, secondly, I'm going to ask all of you to do a short uh, exit readiness assessment of, of your business or if you're a professional advisor here or your client's business and, and I'll share more about that later. And third part, I just want to open it up to questions and, and, and uh, uh, tell you um, also what I can do if, if you want to find out more. So uh, without further ado, I'll just kind of dive into that agenda. Um, yeah, the information and, and stats I'm going to share with you here um, are compiled with the help of the Business Enterprise Institute. It's an organization out of Denver, Colorado, which I've trained with over the last year. And um, it was started by a guy named John Brown, uh, who himself was an attorney. And uh, he wanted to help business owners and families benefit from their life's work. And, and he's recognized as uh, one of the foremost credible resources for industry leading exit planning information. And um, I am a member of the Business Enterprise Institute. So uh, John uh, had, had his own personal exit story. His father uh, had a business. 
Um, and uh, he ended up selling his business to uh, a key employee, somebody who had been there for many years and, and thought uh, he'd be trusted and, and do well with the business. And, and the funding for that purchase was going to happen through the business profits. And, and the first year, things went well. Um, you know, he managed to uh, uh, pay the, the installment payment. And second year, not so well, uh, a little bit less. And so he got a little bit less. And the third year, didn't get anything and so on and so forth. But, but it was uh, that experience for John that made him realize that there really needs to be some kind of a process or some kind of a structure to this whole exiting uh, plan. And um, uh, Corey shared a little bit about myself, so I'm not going to dwell too much on that, but I, I have been working as a senior business advisor with Wardell International for a number of years um, and uh, it trained as a, an exit planner with Business Institute. I, I co-founded a business here in Vancouver in 1994 called Solly's Bagelry, uh, which is still around after 20, 21, 27 years, I guess. And uh, I, I teach and have been uh, at... Um, the Vancouver uh, Community College as a, in, in the area of business, uh, specifically in sales and marketing. And, uh, and, you know, I've had my own personal exit experience from Solly's as well. And, and, and all those things really helped uh, to form my interest and um, my, you know, passion about doing this kind of work because I, I felt it was really just a natural evolution of, of my business career. And my goal here today is actually to you know help you uh, to educate you and, and business owners and, and your advisors here about the, the really the tangible value and return on the investment of exit planning. Uh, my mission is uh, to help business owner clients uh, plan for the single most critically important financial event of their lives, the transition of their business. You know, and as a business owner, you, you get really one shot. You don't sell your business every day. So it, it, if you don't kind of plan it right, plan for it, you could leave a lot of money on the table or pay too much in taxes or, or lose control of the whole process. So my job as an exit planner or advisor is to help make that process go smoothly. Um, I just want to show you a few stats. Uh, BEI, as, a, as an institute, uh, does surveys with business owners across the U.S., and, and I think we can, we can uh, probably translate that uh, across the border uh, quite easily. But, um, you know, some statistics um, that, that uh, they found, and, and this is probably corroborated by other measures, uh, but 81% of business owners want to stop working in their business in the next 10 years. That's if you consider the number of small, medium sized businesses in North America, that is a lot of businesses. And if you're a business owner, I'm wondering, you know, if you know who you're going to sell your business to, how your business is going to compete for qualified buyers and all that. So when your market, uh, when your business does go on the market, you know, it's important to ensure that it's well prepared and, and uh, so that it uh, withstands the due diligence test that uh, buyers are going to uh, or invest investment companies are going to uh, you know put you through so um, another statistic is 58 uh, percent of owners they would exit today if they knew their financial security was assured you know there are a lot of owners are burnt out I mean I think particularly with COVID over the last uh, couple of years you know my own clients uh, have had to do a lot of um, pivoting, as everybody says, uh, you know, in this in this climate, in this environment, to keep their business going, and um, it's tiring, it's exhausting. Um, uh, they may uh, be ready to leave, but they're likely not prepared to leave. Um, and, and 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 of all of those businesses that uh, want to sell, uh, that want to transition out of the business, of all those that are would do it today if they had the money, twenty one percent of them have put it in writing. Which to me is outstanding. So like like eighty percent almost are kind of you know winging it. And uh, when you, you you know when you got into business when as a business owner when you started your business like I did, you know you wrote a business plan. That was pretty much the first step. Um, but many business owners haven't written an exit plan. And um, so I I think of it, and I guess we think about it, about it as having a will for your business. You know. It's not just a buy-sell agreement or in case something happens to you and all that. that you need a real written plan with all the T's crossed and the I's dotted. So um, here's an interesting 
thing uh, that, that was found is 75% of business owners who have sold, who have left their business after one year are up unhappy. They have regrets about it. And those regrets are, could be varied. It could be they didn't think they had got enough money for it. They could have got more money. It could have been that they weren't really prepared for exit life and, and they hadn't really figured out what they were going to do or who they were outside their business. Um, and, uh, but the, the reality is, is 100% of business owners will leave their business at, at some point, willingly or not. It's just a fact of life. And, and as an exit advisor, you know, we can help you uh, prepare for that. Um, what is exit planning? Well, uh, John Brown uh, defines it this way. He says, exit planning is a process that allows a business owner to sell their business when they want for the money they need to the person they choose. So that's that's his definition. So exit planning really is a holistic approach to designing an exit strategy for your business that allows you to receive the maximum value for your life's work. Yeah, it encompasses uh, setting exit objectives, like when you wanna leave, to whom you wanna sell your business, and putting together a team of professional advisors like a CPA, a business lawyer, a financial advisor at the very least, and, and writing down each aspect of the transition sequence. So uh, an exit plan will help limit your tax burden by implementing strategies to keep you know, the CRA from asking for more than they need to get. So finally, exit planning will keep you in control of process. Putting your business up for sale without the pre-sale planning done is a sure way to lose control. Now, um, BEI has a, uh, a structure and a, a process for going about this exit planning journey. And it starts with, um, um, you know, looking at what the owner objectives are. E exit planning can be complex, uh, hit and miss, uh, chaotic, um, put into place when an owner has, uh, has had enough and, and wants to get out or is sick. You know, th th that kind of exit can be very chaotic and very disruptive or it can be relatively simple and systematic. And, and we use the second approach. Uh, our approach is seven steps. Uh, they do not necessarily need to occur in order, but we need to ensure that all of them are accomplished. And uh, first, uh, we need to complete uh, step one. And step one is about identifying uh, the owner's objectives. We need to determine exactly what the owner, you the owner want to accomplish in leaving your business which can go far beyond the basic questions of you know, when you want to leave and how much money you need. It really depends on the business owner. Uh, we say there are foundational uh, goals and then there are aspirational goals. Um, and so the basic thing, things we do need to know are when you want to leave, how much money you need after taxes to live comfortably, you know, who's your target successor? Is it a third party or is it a child or, or a key employee? Uh, step two requires quantifying business and personal resources in terms of your objectives. In other words, it helps us to determine what you'll need to get out from the sale of your business to secure your financial um, uh, security, I guess, uh, uh, or assure your financial security. So the financial planning team or, or your financial uh, people on the exit team uh, can run projections and see how much after-tax income is required uh, to continue your lifestyle and what the net proceeds will be uh, from the sale to provide that income. So step three is about maximizing and protecting business value, and that has several parts. Uh, maximizing value involves you know, how the business can be made more attractive which value drivers can we work with to increase the business value throughout the transition process? So then what can we do to protect the value by minimizing the tax impact of the transition, protect against any possible litigation and, and, and keep things on an even keel. Um, step four uh, and five really go together. Well, we usually uh, will pursue one or the other. Uh, will the sale be to a third party for cash, or will it be to an insider, you know, a family member, um, key employee or a key employee group? There are specific strategies we may implement in each case. Uh, it's not a cookie cutter process. 
every case is different. Uh, and uh, to, to level the, the playing field and give you, the business owner, a you know, positive position uh, during the negotiations. And step six is about business continuity planning. This is uh, you know, what happens if you get hit by a, a bus or a car, God forbid. Uh, you know, here uh, we need to uh, make sure that things are in place uh, to continue the business and to preserve the value until it's sold. And I'm surprised that when I talk to business owners, how many business owners have no business continuity plan, whether they're selling or not. That is at least a minimum thing you need to have in place um, to make sure that if something happens to you, people know, you know, who's in charge or where the passwords are or, you know, what the relationships are, all those kinds of things. And we have, a, we have a, an assessment that we do to uh, produce a, a, a business continuity plan, if anybody's interested in that. Um, step seven is um, about personal wealth and estate planning. You know, minimize the tax consequences uh, to the owner of the business, the family, while planning for investment. What are you going to do with that money? after you sell uh, of the net proceeds. Uh, and I, I'm not gonna go too much deep into that, but we'll always do step one and two. You know, we always wanna know what the goals and objectives are, what your dreams, what your visions are. And the more clear, the more easy uh, it is uh, to, to help you reach them. Uh, step two, the valuation step helps us to know the kinds of resources we are working with. So what do we got working with both, uh, you know, in business assets and in non-business assets? And how does that, you know, how does that cash flow over, uh, you know, your life expectancy uh, look? And so, um, you know, we want to kind of take a look at that. And step um, uh, steps of five, uh, and, uh, and and that we can do the other steps, you know, and it really in any order. Once we have the flexibility, uh, we have the flexibility to uh, manipulate this model in, in any way you want. And so. Uh, this is the key to how we help you reach your goals. That's the exit uh, planning process. Um, how we implement that uh, once we have a plan, a comprehensive plan in place, um, is um, we help to work implement that in, in a format. So once we have really an agreement uh, to work together, we start to gather the data um, in an interview process. And, we spend time learning about your business, your goals, and your vision for the future. And then we develop a, a, a unique set of recommendations based on the information we've gathered. So what appropriate, given your appropriate situation, your situation in business, um, what your goals are and all that, what recommendations uh, would be uh, important to consider. And then we'll, 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 uh, we'll meet with your advisor team, you know, to outline your vision, offer recommendations here. Um, and then we will uh, then uh, look at putting those recommendations forward uh, in a presentation to you as the owner. And once uh, uh, those things are decided, we really have a, a custom map is finished and, and, uh, and we start to, to, to implement the plan on a timeline and with assigned responsibilities. So here's how the exit planning process looks from a graphic format. So note that you, the business owner, is, is at the center, you know, surrounded by a team of professionals. Well, not one professional can do all what needs to be done in an exit plan. Um, and so the team approach is, is recommended uh, because, uh, because of that fact. And so we need to bring together the right group of professionals that are going to assist the owner in exiting. But being the bullseye in, is not always the optimal situation or position for the owner to be in. There's just too many things to consider. Plus, he needs to run his business or she needs to run his business, her business. So we recommend bringing in an exit planning advisor to oversee the creation and the implementation of the van, of the plan. Just like a general contractor, uh, you know, who is engaged to oversee the trades and make sure the process runs smoothly uh, when you're building a house or an office and all that, you know, the exit planning advisor will act as your exit planning chief of staff. He will coordinate, he or she will coordinate the team and guide the development of the plan, leaving you, the business owner, 
to do what you do best, which is run your business. And of course, uh, when you're looking at that runway uh, to your exit, you know, the business owner cannot be distracted by, you know, looking what's going, looking at going out the door as quickly as possible. He needs to focus on this business because that's the time when you actually use to build value into the business so that when it does go up for sale, we, we maximize that, that value. And you, the owner really is the, the, the best person for that position. So uh, of course, uh, you know, you're making decisions on how the plans to be built and organized. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the decision of the owner. Uh, but the uh, planning advisor uh, will be counseling you. I'll be working with you uh, and, and advising you on the big picture and make sure the team members are getting done what they need to get done on time and on budget. So I help to facilitate. So we want to make sure that there's communication between the team members and no one uh, should be doing anything in a vacuum. Um, so the reason why we take this collaborative approach, which is, uh, I think, uh, the right approach and, and the approach that BEI has, uh, has been utilizing for, for many years, uh, is that, as I said, you know, no one advisor can, has all the answers. You know, you need that diverse skills of talents are all necessary to this uh, process. And, and the team approach will minimize time and, in fact, it will minimize cost. Now, um, what's the timeline for doing exit planning? Well, um, creating and implementing an exit plan does take some time. Um, we have kind of a three phase approach. The first phase is about the discovery gathering, uh, data gathering phase. And, and that could take anywhere from a month to maybe three months to get all the information together, depending on the owner and how well his uh, data is uh, available, how easy it is to access. And we will uh, need a business evaluation and cash flow forecasts and copies of buy-sell agreements and all those things in place. So, you know, if everything works out and things are aligned and nobody gets sick or goes, okay, we could probably get it done in a month, but it's probably more likely, you know, three months. So then there's the plan creation phase. That's where we take all the data and produce these recommendations I mentioned and meet with the advisors who are assigned responsibilities. Uh, they mean, they may, there may be a need uh, to meet individually with some of the advisors uh, to work out some of their parts. Uh, so we got to factor that in and it will take some time for each advisor to write up his or her parts of the plan. And the implementation stage, well, that can take anywhere from six months to several years, depending on how much time frame uh, we have and how much runway we have to uh, the owner's exit date goal. So um, implementation is bringing this roadmap that we've created, uh, which is a comprehensive plan um, and includes all the steps uh, and uh, it could be implemented as quickly as six months, depending on the complexity, but most recommendations, you know, take some more time than that. And, and so we can also, uh, by the way, we can have a loss, a lot of things going on at the same time. The accountant can be working on something while the lawyer is drafting something, you know, while a financial planner is doing something else. So uh, that's, that's where the exit planner's value comes in in terms of just keeping everybody on the team, um, you know, focused on the owner's goals. And uh, that's my job. Um, so that's kind of services I, I guess uh, I provide would be consultative services, resources, you know, professional network of a, a business advisor, professional advisors that I know in, a, in, this, uh, in this market and abroad. And, uh, you know, these software tools that we're going to use um, uh, to uh, phase in the exit plan, the execution process. So my, my role uh, uh, is that I am engaged by the owner and in the sole interest of achieving the owner's exit goals. So I don't make any money. I don't charge any money for, for referrals or, or that. Uh, my goal is to help the owner exit, um, uh, you know, in a successful way. And that is, you know, to meet the goals that we've set together. Um, the, so the value of the of exit planning, um, you know, for our clients uh, is really, uh, it's about uh, maximizing value it's about minimizing risk and it's about staying in control. So the first benefit, uh, getting maximum value for your business. Well, you know, this, is, uh, uh, this doesn't always mean 
uh, the highest price. Uh, it's more about getting the value that you and your you, the business owner, want. You know what, whatever that may be for you. Uh, do you value time, uh, reduce stress, leaving a legacy, a successful continuation of the business with a family member at the helm? Uh, you know, continued employment for your loyal employees, recognition, whatever that is, that's what we work towards. We try to get you as much of that as possible. And the second benefit is minimizing risk. So you deal with risk as business owners. We do that every day, um, but we don't want to take unnecessary risks. You know, so but as we've seen, un unexpected changes uh, can take their tolls and deals can kind of blow up at, at the closing table, but an exit plan uh, identifies these issues and addresses them before they become too dangerous whenever possible. We don't wanna take you on any more risk than absolutely necessary as you plan uh, for you know this foremost event uh, of your life, uh, business life, that is your, your eventual exit. So um, finally, most importantly, we keep you, the business owner, in control until you're ready to make the move. Your departure from the business should always be on your timeline and terms, not someone else's. My experience has been that business owners are independent guys. They would rather control their own destiny than just sit back and let that happen to them. So planning addresses that need. Um, okay, so now uh, I just want to take a... a, a quick uh, break for, for a minute to have uh, you uh, participate in a little exercise. And, and don't worry, it's only exercise on your keyboards. Um, there's a link in the chat box uh, that I'd like all of you who would like to participate uh, to, um, to open. And what this is, is a BEI, a Business uh, Enterprise Institute uh, assessment. It's a, it's a quick assessment, not a deep one, but it's just a quick picture, top line view. And uh, there are 16 questions, and, and I wanted you to just go through each of them, and it's a multiple kind of a choice there to rate the factors uh, of the question on these 16 questions. And if you're a professional advisor attending here today, uh, I think um, think of an owner or a client that, that you serve and think about how they might answer. And uh, everyone uh, who completes this assessment will be emailed a copy of, of uh, the report results that it produces. And uh, so I, I, I think it should only take a few minutes. Maybe, um, I don't know, how we can we, uh, Corey, uh, how can we confirm that everybody has completed it? Can, I don't see a show of hands. So is there a way to, to get somebody to, to monitor that? Um, I put the link again on the chat box. If yeah. anyone has um, an issue or need more time, please write on the chat box. Okay. And uh, so I'll just w wait to, to hear uh, um, from when I think uh, we, we've had everybody that, uh, who wants to participate, participate. And then uh, I'm just going to move into uh, the, you know, the question part of our um, webinar today. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to ask questions, please put it on the chat box or the Q&A box um, on the bottom of your screens. Um, I see a couple of questions, Joe. Yeah. Um, from Sharon, when selling to an employee, what are the first steps? Well, uh, the first steps is, uh, I, I guess, really to determine that the employee wants to buy the business. Uh, and, and secondly, uh, that you think he's capable of running the business. He has the skills um, and he has the experience to be able to take on that role. So uh, those would be the first two steps. Obviously, uh, there are other steps around how the funding happens for the sale and uh um, what the what the owner wants to get out of the business financially, and whether that's going to make sense, because a lot a lot of times, uh, you know, employees don't have the money, um, so you have to fund it a different way through the profits of the business, and uh, you have to do a number of things to make sure that you don't turn over control of the business until you or the owner are fully paid. 
Thank you. Um, and I have another question here from Sue. Any thoughts on ways of bringing family along who might not be initially on board with a plan to sell a family business? Well, I think that's part of the role of um, the exit planner is uh, once uh, the family has decided that they wanna hire an exit planner to assist them in this process, uh, you know, we have meetings where we'll sit down with the family and, and they are, any, any of the stakeholders, anybody, uh, you know, needs to be part of, uh, you know, the, the decisions uh, around the business uh, to ensure that everybody is on board and we are all on the same page. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> are we waiting for results, Joe? Are you getting results? Um, no, I, I will. I will get. Yeah, uh, I am. Uh, I'm not going to go. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on talking about the results. I, I um, what what the results will look like. Uh, that that tool uh, that uh, every, the people have participated in uh, filled up. That uh, tool is a piece of software um, out of uh, the planning tool that I use, uh, which is a BEI uh, proprietary tool that they developed specifically for exit planning. And uh, it will produce uh, some results. Uh, and the screen now that I'm sharing, um, you can see that, this graphic, that's one of the, that's one of the results of, from the uh, report that I'm gonna be sending. And I just talk about that for, for a second right now. So uh, all of you that uh, did the ratings um, on that assessment, and as I said, that's just a quick assessment. We have more detailed, um, dive, deeper dives into to the state of the business, but it gives us a quick view, an overview in terms of what the red flags are in your business right now. If you were to put your business up for sale, you know, um, uh, and you rated it like this in this example, you would see that, you know, there needs to be more, for example, value drivers up here uh, in the around one o'clock. Uh, that uh, needs attention. We need to look at what is, uh, what are the factors that contribute uh, to value of the business? Um, for example, it could be around, do we have a management uh, team uh, in place, a strong management team in place to take over? You know, do we have a diversified customer base? Uh, do uh, what is our uh, profitability, our, our EBITDA uh, measure? Uh, you know, we, we need to work on that uh, because uh, those are those those uh, factors are showing up as um, you know as a red flag. Um, and then there might be a continuity plan. In this case, you, this may have person answered that no, they had no business continuity plan in place. Uh, so that was a, a priority. So all these red flags become priorities and we may decide, okay, you know, let's, let's work on these two factors to start. We don't have to, um, as a, um, um, as a client, you don't have to sign up to buy the whole exit plan and everything. We can just start at this basis by just saying, let's get a, a written continuity plan done for your business. So that, you know, God forbid something happens to you, even during this whole planning process or your exiting process that, uh, you, you know, decisions around, uh, you know, how you want things to happen will be, will be thought and, and, and will be made of. So uh, that's what the uh, re report looks like for the intent, as I said, is to really organize and emphasize the most critical issues uh, in your business right now. And, and, uh, and that might impede the sale, as I mentioned, that might affect the value, either the value that people are willing to pay for your business or the, the, the time it takes to sell or, or whatever it might be. Uh, so we use this information to work with you in, in developing, um, you know, customized uh, value builder exit plan. Now, um, for anybody who's interested, you know, uh, I mean, the, 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 ne the next steps really would be uh, to have, uh, you know, an uh, initial consult consultation, uh, just to talk about what the current state of, of your business is in, you know, we'll talk about, you know, your, your plans a little bit around your vision and all that. And then uh, to see whether exit planning might be, you know, a good fit for you or not. Um, and I offer those free of charge or 
and and, and of course uh, confidentiality uh, is assured. Um, and uh, I would I would just say like to say that you know uh, good for all of you for for taking you know the first step and being here today. Um, I think there's a lot of work to be done uh, in educating the business community around the importance of exit planning. Uh, I, I think it's 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 really it, as we look at a number of businesses that are planning to exit, you know, it, it, the, often business owners don't know who the first person to call is. Like, who should I call? My accountant or my financial planner or my lawyer? Well, you know, as you as you've seen from this presentation, there are a number of people that need to be called, uh, and um, the value, I guess, of having someone facilitate and coordinate that on your behalf is that you can then for that exit planning time uh, focus on building as much value into your business as you can. Um, so um, that concludes kind of the formal part of the presentation. Um, yeah, I encourage you to reach out if you have any questions to me uh, after the webinar and, and uh, I thank you uh, to you all for attending and thank you to uh, Burnaby Board of Trade for, for hosting today. And thank I you have so some time for questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of questions in the chat box. Sure. Um, so I'm just gonna read it to you. Uh, do you get involved with business valuation or do you lean on outside professionals for that? Also, does your methodology work best with certain industries over others? Is there preference on your end? So the first okay. part was, um, do you get involved with business valuation or do you use professionals for that? Yeah, there are three levels of valuation can be done in a business. Uh, well, maybe there's four. First, what the owner thinks it's worth. <laughs> And and uh, and often that's you know uh, more than 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 it actually is. Um, and the, the second one is getting kind of a there's internet valuations. You can go to a site like Biz Equity and and you can you can get a you know a ballpark valuation. Uh, then it gets into more getting people who specialize in this area. Uh, you can get a you know a, a opinion of, of value, which is, which is kind of a higher level. It does cost some money. Uh, but then there's also a, you know, a, a certified valuation by a, a certified business value, which can cost quite a bit of money. At the beginning, um, you want to make you want to get an independent valuation. Uh, you know, uh, not not what you think it's worth as a business owner or what your accountant thinks it's worth, but actually someone who is who has a uh, an outside objective opinion. That could be a broker. Um, uh, who, uh, but but they have a vested interest, uh, so uh, it's often good to kind of get uh, a couple of different opinions uh, and see see where your starting point in, is. Once you get into uh, the exit planning process and you need a, a better quality of valuation, that's when we would bring in you know um, you know another level of evaluator because obviously that might be something that the uh, uh, the buyer might insist on in in, in the offer. So. Uh, my role, uh, no, I'm, I, I don't do valuations. Um, my role is to help you find the right value uh, of your business. Okay, and um, do you have specific industries that you work with? Is there a preference from your side? Not so much industries. Uh, I don't think there's, uh, you know, I've, I've worked with many different types of clients in my business advisory practice. Uh, from food uh, to distribution uh, to professional services, you know, and on and so forth. But um, what I what I am interested in is is you know a business needs to be doing a certain amount of vo volume uh, to be able to really look at the value of investing in business exit planning. Um, uh, so uh, for businesses, probably less than a million dollars. Exit planning might not be, you know, uh, uh, not, not, might not. It definitely would, would help, but, but but it may not be affordable. Thank you. Uh, we have another question here. Is there a way of proving what a business was worth prior to COVID? 
is there a way of proving what a business is worth prior to COVID? Well, um, yeah, uh, I'm sure there is. Uh, you know, wh- how I would do it, um, I would probably look at what uh, the business uh performance, financial performance, look at their, the EBITDA, and I might apply some kind of a multiple to that, 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 that might be used for, 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 uh, for the industry uh, to give a, a ballpark. Uh, I think you could use the numbers uh, uh, that the history of the business prior to, to a COVID uh, to get a valuation done and so on and so forth. Um, the the, the, the more important thing uh, to me would be has your business been resilient uh, through COVID? What have you done to adapt? Has your business is like there? Are you a blockbuster? Is like nobody, <laughs> nobody gonna, you know, go to a video store anymore? Or, or is your business uh, something that was impacted, like you know, the food service business, for example, in a big way? And how did you adapt and 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 uh, um, uh, to that? I think those that's that's a value driver in a way you know, for a business that they can adapt and, and that and the leadership management there were able to, uh, you know, to, to keep the business uh, growing. Maybe the profitability was down a little bit, so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, there are many businesses that did not survive COVID. Would you advise them to wait until they're fully recovered before selling? Well, um, you know, it, it depends. Uh, again, I, I think it depends on the state of the owner. As I said, um, I, I think we're seeing a lot of businesses come on the market for sale uh, because in Vancouver, for example, uh, because there, there seems to be a demand for people to buy businesses right now. There, there's a buyer demand out there. Um, they're looking for a particular type of businesses uh, that are almost kind of turnkey. You know, they can walk in and they can, you know, pay for it, and it can operate. Or, uh, and and systems are in place, and and uh, structures in place, and management is in place, and it's it's making a predictable uh, return. You know, those kinds of businesses are very attractive. So, yeah, um, is it a good time to, to to sell if you've got a business that's in that condition, um, and uh, you've got your uh, you've got your mind on on uh, leaving? Uh, soon. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, exit planning is, uh, well, the plan may take some time uh, to develop, uh, you know, as I, I said, depending on the phases, maybe six to nine months to, to actually flesh out a plan, a full plan. Um, the implementation of the plan uh, can take some time, you know, uh, and the thing is with tax implications and things like that and the sale, large sale of business. Uh, if a business is not structured tax, effic- tax efficiently, that's not something you can do in six months and just all of a sudden change the structure and CRA is going to be okay with that. You have to plan these things in, in advance. So um, that's why one of the things we do is look, look at, you know, the factors, how well your business is, is structured for sale uh, to, as I said, minimize uh, the tax implications of, of that sale. Thank you. And we have um, one last question. Um, when business exit starts, is there a recommended industry standard timeline for completion of the entire process? So are we talking about the implementation of the exit plan here? Um, looks like the is asking about the timeline. Um, once you start the business exit. Okay, so so say we have the plan in place and we're saying, okay, let so yeah, so there's a timeline of different milestones um, along the, the exit planning path, the pl- pathway that I, that I talked about, the roadmap, if you will, whatever. Um, and those uh, milestones have timelines to them and accountability to them. So, uh, provided the players, uh, the team, the team, uh, the the exit team of professionals are all doing their job, which is my job. Uh, you know, things should move along the timeline that we've set. Um, and so, the timeline has got to be realistic. And um, if an owner tells me he wants to 
you know, improve the profitability of his business by 50% in the next year, uh, that, that may not be realistic. You know, he wants to build a value driver. So he wants to get a management team in place in the next two months and trained. That, that That's not realistic. So the timeline is really going to depend on the state of the business, where it is right now, current state of the business, um, and how much of that, uh, how much of the owner's, uh, you know, knowledge and in, intellectual property is, is still in his head. Okay, thank you. Um, I do have another question here. You mentioned tax implications. Other than capital gains, are there other tax implications for sale? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, because there's other ways to exit um, a business um, that, for example, if you're gifting your business to, to children, um, if you're uh, transferring your business, doing an internal transfer and paid out of, um, you're paid out of the dividends or paid out of the, the business, you're, 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 there are ways, uh, I'm not a tax expert. Uh, that's why we bring in a tax expert to look at what are the tax implications of the, of the various exit plans. So who, if you're gonna sell it to uh, a third party, then yes, capital gains is pretty much the only thing. You're, but if you're doing on a different transfer, either an internal transfer uh, uh, to management or gift, there are there are ways to structure it so that you can actually uh, reduce uh, or even perhaps even eliminate the tax implications. Okay, uh, that's all the questions we have for today. Um, thank you very much, Joe, for your time and expertise. Uh, we really appreciate it.